Hey everybody, today we're going to be seeing if we can actually use a balloon to make a sound lens. A lens that actually bends sound the same way that a normal lens bends light. And then I'll be talking about if we can actually use sound lenses, does that mean we could actually have a sound laser beam just like we have a light laser beam? Is there a way to focus sound so much that it doesn't spread at all and just goes in almost a straight line? So after this experiment, I'll be talking about hypersonic sound and a way to make laser-like sound that goes only in one direction and only people in that beam can hear the sound. So if you've ever used a magnifying glass before, you're already familiar with the fact that lenses can bend light. So what a lens does is it takes light from a bigger area and compresses it down to a smaller area or focuses it down to a smaller area. So right now the lights in my room are spreading over this whole area. But if I use this lens here, what happens is you can see that I stick it here and I can focus it on the light. So this is the light on the top of my ceiling here. You can actually even see an image of it almost. So you can see that right in the center is the light from the light bulb, but around it you can see a total shadow. So even though this lens is glass, you can see that it shows up like a shadow here. That's because it's taking all the light that would have hit here on the paper and it's putting it all here. So that's what lenses do, is they take light that would have been spread over this whole area of the shadow and they put it in towards the center. And so it focuses the light into a smaller area. So the maximum amount of light that it can grab is the area of the shadow here. And the reason lenses do this is because of the fact that when light hits an object that has a different refractive index, it bends the light. So as shown in a previous video, you can see that when I shine the light through my acrylic lid here, the light bends. So that means if you have a curved surface like in the lens here, the light's coming in like this. And what ends up happening is that light gets bent towards the same area here. So all of the light that would have just been going straight now gets curved in towards this focal point. So if light and sound are both waves, that means that technically I should be able to make a lens that focuses sound instead of light. So the reason that lenses work like this is because glass is a lot more dense than air. And so when the light hits the glass, it bends the light. So the light is coming in straight and it bends it. So that means if I want to use a sound lens, I have to use a gas that's more dense than air. And so what this means is if I can get a ball of gas that's denser than the air around it, then the sound waves, when they hit that ball of gas, they will curve just like the lens curves these light waves. They'll curve it and I should be able to get a focal point of sound directly after the lens like this. So what's an easy to find denser gas than air? Carbon dioxide. Now in order to do this, we need some CO2. Now the easiest way to get CO2 is just by breathing out. The next easiest way is to use vinegar and baking soda. Okay, first I'll get my baking soda in here. And I'll just fill up this bottle with vinegar. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Lots of CO2 here. So you can see how heavy this balloon is now because there's carbon dioxide in it instead of air. And the carbon dioxide is more dense than the air. And this is the feature that we're going to be using to focus the sound. Let's tie it off. Okay, I've got myself a carbon dioxide balloon. 
Look how dense it is. <laughs> okay, so in order to test out my CO2 balloon sound lens, I'm going to be using a really annoying tone on my phone. It's in the 3000 to 4000 hertz range. I'll try in the 3000 hertz range first and see if it can actually amplify the sound by grabbing more sound around it and focusing it down to a point where I'm going to have my camera. Okay, so during this experiment, I'm going to be using a speaker that's going to act as though it's a flashlight, and then my balloon is going to act as though it's a lens. So basically, I'm going to be shining my speaker onto the lens, and it'll be focusing it onto the camera's microphone. Okay, so I have a speaker here, so this is going to act the same way that my flashlight did, and then I have my balloon here that's going to be my lens. So let's see if it gets any louder when I stick the balloon in between the speaker and the camera. Now what we just saw right here is actually the same reason why sound carries better at night. Because during the night the ground cools down quickly and so the air above it is actually warmer than the air just above the ground. And so that means that it bends the sound that normally would have escaped towards the ground. So this is pretty cool that we could actually use CO2 to amplify sound a little bit. But what if we could actually do something more? Is there a technology that we can use that can actually aim sound the way that we aim light like a laser beam? Well, actually there is, and it's a scary new technology called hypersonic sound. Here's how it works. So normal sound works like this. You move a membrane and the membrane vibrates back and forth and it creates at high and low pressure points that propagate outwards. But let's say you didn't want to generate the sound and have it propagate outward because that way the sound just spreads out everywhere. But what if you wanted to make the sound right where you wanted it so that you didn't have to propagate the sound everywhere, but you just wanted to have the sound occur in one specific location. So instead of propagating out those high and low pressure zones, what if you could artificially generate exactly where you wanted those high and low pressure zones? That's exactly what hypersonic sound does. So it uses modulated ultrasound. So the modulated ultrasound is happening in the hundreds of thousands of hertz range. And what it does is it changes the pressure of the air in the room locally exactly where you want it. Because ultrasound has a much narrower spread than regular sound. And it's a modulated ultrasound, which means it's changing. And it's changing such that it's using the air so that the air will start to vibrate right where it needs to, to create these high pressure zones and low pressure zones. So the air acts as a demodulator. So it doesn't require any external demodulator. Your goal is to create these high and low pressure zones. And you want these high and low pressure zones to mimic sound, audible sound. So you're not actually hearing the ultrasonic sound, but you're hearing the pressure waves generated by the ultrasonic waves going through air. And so what happens is wherever you're aiming this ultrasonic beam, you can create these high and low pressure zones that sound like actual sound. And so the sound is not generated from the ultrasonic source at all, but it's generated at every point along the beam here. And so anybody that's within this beam will hear the sound at exactly the same strength, whether they're here or here. So you could use this technology to generate sound waves that are deafening loud to one person, whereas a few feet away another person might not even hear the sound at all. Now this hypersonic sound has some really cool implications for technology. It means that you can aim sound with almost laser-like precision. So if this technology gets developed, it means that we wouldn't have to rely on sound that just gets spread everywhere and everybody can hear it. But you can aim it specifically at the people who want to hear it. There's a really cool TED talk by one of the inventors of hypersonic sound named Woody Norris. And I'll put a link in my description where you can check out that talk. He shows one of his devices that he built where he can aim the sound at the audience. It's pretty cool. 
Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos out. And head over to theactionlab.com if you haven't checked out the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.